benefits of Holy Communion. The part, the part A is explanation. What you should expect. What will definitely happen. That is what I want to explain. And I won't take time. Now in John chapter 6, the Bible says, verse 48, I am that bread of life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and they are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that a man may eat therefore and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Not every food you eat guarantees living. Not every food. Eating is by living. But living forever is not from every food. Are you getting what I'm trying to say, sir? He said, if you eat my flesh, you drink my blood, you will not live for one day or two days. You will live forever. So Jesus' blood is not an European diet. Jesus' blood is not Yoruba diet. You may, it's not Amala at all. So you may not know how to eat French cuisine. But Jesus' blood is a must to all races. If a white man says no to his blood, he's dead. If the black man says no to his blood, he's dead. He said, any man that will live must eat me. So it is a must for all tribes, for all races. There are certain food that you eat and all they will do is to promote death. Adam ate. Adam died. And that is why the Bible says, if life was lost through eating, life must also be regained through eating. Jesus' blood is not social drinking. It's not social gathering. Any gathering that promotes his blood is the most powerful gathering. So the devil is afraid of this gathering. Sickness is afraid of this meeting. Everywhere and anywhere where the blood of Jesus is being celebrated, that is the highest meeting, that is the most powerful meeting. So you can't be here and still be the same. As you drink the blood today, as you eat his flesh, your best will emerge. That amen can be a little bit better. So number one, the blood of Jesus commands dominion. Anywhere you see communion, there is dominion. Each time you drink his blood and you eat his flesh, he said, my life will flow through you. If the life of the Lord Jesus Christ is flowing through you, anything that cannot overpower him cannot overpower you. Whatever that cannot take defeat him can never defeat you. The blood of Jesus cannot go through your system. His flesh cannot go through your system. And then sickness will gain power over your life. So if you are trusting God and looking unto him for dominion, communion, his blood, his flesh commands dominion. So I want you to expect it. I want you to look for it. Number two. The blood of Jesus commands uncommon and unique favor. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. The Bible says, And they began to go from house to house, breaking bread, eating the blood. And the Bible says, They were finding favor before God and favor before men. Each time you are consistently or steadfastly Doing this, this is the second thing you should expect. Favor. Uncommon favor. Spiritual favor. So the blood you're about to take, the moment you drink it, number one, you gain dominion. Number two, favor. Any door you knock must open. Anybody you talk to, to must hear you. Everywhere you step, they must submit to you. 
Because you are no longer ordinary. Yes, the, the cloak of favor, the strength of favor, the spirit of favor will overshadow you. I want you to look forward to that. Expect it. Particularly before the end of this year. We are about to enter into November and December. So you begin to experience strange favor. Amen. That amen can be better. Amen. The Bible says, it has power for uncommon insight. Luke chapter 24, 27 to 31. Ask power for uncommon insight. Where there's communion, there's revelation. There's revelation. Where there's communion, there's insight. The Bible says they were walking with Jesus on the road to Emmaus, and he was talking to them about scriptural facts and spiritual truth, but they did not understand. So there are times you can be walking with Christ and you lack understanding of whatever he's telling you. You can be walking with Christ and at times there is no conviction in your heart. So it is not alone to say you walk. What guarantees safety? What guarantees lifting? His ability to understand what he is telling you. Insight and revelation. They are cheap where communion is. The Bible says as he broke the bread and as he gave them the flesh, their eyes were opened. Don't just eat it anyhow. Eat it with expectation. As you open the scripture, there will be insight. Concerning the issue of your life, there will be revelation. Concerning things that are affecting you, there will be revelation. Knowing what to do, knowing when to do it, knowing how to do it. Communion commands revelation. No wonder they were doing it consistently. So if you have been eating it and you have not been having access to revelation, it's because you are not expecting it. You just, if you drink it and you eat it like Coke, and the only thing that, like Pastor said, it goes through your stomach and it comes out like that. But when there is an understanding and you apply your heart to that understanding, the next thing that you begin to see the Lord will be doing is that there will be revelation and there will be insight. Communion commands healing and deliverance. It commands healing and deliverance. Each time you take the blood, whatever is the scan report, they dissolve. Whatever is the x-ray, they dissolve. Lumbago, ovarian cyst, fibro, cancer, ulcer, migraine, headache, blood fallopian tube, low sperm count. Whatever the name of that sickness is, known and unknown, naturally they die where the blood is. Whatever they have said concerning you, whatever they are claiming that they have seen, the cheapest way for that to submit is to apply the blood. You will drink it. If you have faith in drugs medical doctors are giving you, you don't know the content, they're only telling you, drink this, take this. And as soon as you take that, you say, yes, I am here. I learned of a woman nearby our hospital, an elderly woman. They brought the woman from village. Took the woman to the hospital. The doctor said, Mommy, my mother is nothing serious affecting you. We just give you drug and then you go and then you rest. My man, you know, I know, I know something is happening to me. And my case is injection. You give me injection, I will be healed. But all this one that you are giving me, you just say, Mama, I'm a doctor. Go. Just take this and take that. You know, the third day they brought the mama back. They said, How are you? He said, Oh, what is it? Bruger. They said, What? He said, I told you that if it does not involve injection, I cannot be healed. The doctor said, Okay, no problem, mama. We are going to give you injection. So they now put distilled water inside syringe. And they gave mama. So the mama came back. They said, How are you, mama? Only she be more suffering quicker from an injection. Only I'm now perfect. Everything is in order. So it's your belief that controls the world. It is what you believe that determines the outcome of your life. You don't know them. You are not there where they were preparing the drugs. They just explained. Just because you believe the doctor, 
and you believe the drug, you come back to say, I am healed. If you can transfer the same belief and the same faith, that this flesh and this blood, they will command power over sickness, over disease. Then, in a twinkling of an eye, immediately, spontaneously, whatever the doctors have said is the end, the blood will dissolve it. Every drug has limitation. It's only the blood of Jesus that has no limitation. But please, I want you to expect healing after taking this. I want you to expect lifting after taking this. I want you to at least step out and begin to do what you have been finding difficult to do. The moment you eat this flesh and drink the blood, stretch your leg, stretch your mouth, open your heart. Do what you have been finding difficult to do because it is a proof that he died, he rose, and is alive. And God is not a liar. So wherever you see communion, communion promotes holiness. Communion promotes spirituality. The more you have relationship with God, he breaks barriers of iniquity. The blood, the blood, the blood guarantees what I call dedication, consecration, sanctification. The more you drink the blood, the Bible says it purges your dead conscience. He said, for if your heart condemns you, he said, his blood is greater. It is only this blood that is a cure for conscience. Conscience can kill. <laughs> conscience can destroy. Conscience can limit. There are certain works that are permanently recorded in your conscience. You wake up like this, you will still be crying over an event that happened 10 years ago. At times, you will be crying over what is a mistake. Conscience at times will tell you you have committed abortion before. Stop, stop praying. Stop pressing. You, you can't hear you. Times of conscience will say, do you think you are better? It cannot accept your person. If conscience should grip you, it takes a higher power to liberate you. It takes a higher intervention to liberate you. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that if our conscience condemns us, God is greater than that our heart. His blood cleanses our dead conscience. It purges us from iniquity. So the more you drink the blood, the more you eat the flesh, you see God constantly renewing your conscience. What number are we, sir? It commands strength. Communion commands strength. We are in the world where even the most powerful, they are fainting. The Bible says the youth with strength, there will come a time their strength will fail. Even the youth. The youth that can run. There comes a time their strength will fail. There are times you need to be fed by God if you will survive on earth. There is enough stress that if you don't have strength, you might not be able to sustain it. There are men that use drugs to enhance their boldness. There are men that what they drink because they want to face the world. There are men that they are coward and timid. They drown themselves in some other things because they find it difficult to cope with stress. You don't need just any other thing it is true you need to drink something, but drink the blood. Drink the blood of Jesus. There are challenges. There are unimaginable events. People can be oppressed. People can be cheated. People can be defeated. People can be removed. People can be displaced. People can be replaced. But wherever the blood is, there is strength. The Bible says Elijah was a mighty man. But at that time, he sat under a juniper tree and he said, let me die. <laughs> there are times in the journey of life it is only because you think you will go to hell. That is why you are here to commit suicide. If I kill myself, I will go to hell. It is the fear of hell. If hell does not exist, I, I, maybe the human being will be having a heart and not be up to tell. Just dismiss your spirit. Some people, you don't even need to use any drug to kill yourself. You just sleep and you say, mm. Otani, you cross over. If there is no head, 
It is because of air and suffering in eternity. Some people say, I will manage it. There will be a better tomorrow. I will go through it. But when there is supernatural strength, you will exist like Samson. When there is supernatural strength, you will carry gates to Hebron. Where there is supernatural strength, you will walk 40 days and 40 nights like Elijah. You will not be tired. At times, some people will be shocked the way you are coping, handling it. You yourself will say, I can't explain how you have gone through it. In this life, physical strength is not enough for this journey. In this life, human encouragement can fail. <laughs> ah, if you are depending on man to carry you before you can be carried through, they will drop you before time. There are times God needs to personally encourage you before courage can be sustained. But this is what communion guarantees. Inner strength, inexplainable strength, unbelievable strength. Ability to run through troops. Ability to stand tall. Ability to face things. The blood of Jesus. Communion commands unique strength. Number six. Wherever you see the blood, the promises of God is naturally or are naturally activated. The Bible says, until the death of a testator, a will is not read. So, the will of God concerning your life, concerning your purpose, the blueprint, the manual, until this blood is eaten, this flesh is taken, the will is not activated. So, but when you drink the blood and you eat the flesh, you begin to walk in line with the counsel of God for your life. You just find out that the words of God are settled and forever settled. So wherever there is the blood, the will is established. Now hear this. It is in this blood forgiveness is cheap. The Bible says, for without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. But where the blood of Jesus is, there is forgiveness. There is forgiveness. So that is why you cannot dwell in the past or the past iniquity. And there is one thing about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even children that are yet to be born, their sins are forgiven. Because the blood is ever potent. I said Jesus, his blood, can forgive the sins of even children that will come in 20, 2035. The blood is still relevant. Wherever the blood is, there is power to forgive sins. Christians and Galatians says, through his blood we have access to God. Through his blood we have access to God. The more you drink the flesh, the more you eat the blood, there is an access to his presence. Wow! You can see unimaginable things that this blood can command. The Bible says, through the shedding of his blood, he broke down, he destroyed the wall of partition, if Galatians, that is between you and God. So the moment you eat the blood and you drink it, the Bible says anything that is standing as a wall between you and God, boundary between you and God, they are broken down. Ephesians says, for we have peace through his blood. We have peace through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if anything is disturbing you, if anything is affecting you, if there is anything that is not allowing your peace to be settled, all you need this time around, the moment you eat the flesh and you drink the blood, he said the peace that the world cannot give. <laughs> I like that. The peace that the world cannot give, that is the kind of peace you begin to experience. Hear this again. The Bible says, his blood speaks better things. <laughs> you see, his blood speaks better things. Abel's blood is crying for vengeance. There are three things 
about three different kinds of blood. We have the blood of the bull. We have the blood of human being. We also have the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of bull can never take away our sin. Because in the spiritual world, you are higher. A man is higher than bull. A man is higher than animal. So it is, it is improper. It does not follow the hierarchy that the blood of what is lower will cleanse you. That is why it covers iniquity for a wife, but it cannot remove it forever. Higher to that is the blood of human being. But even the blood of human being cannot atone for you because the only language the blood of human being will ask is for vengeance. If you kill any man now, no matter how righteous, no matter how holy, the blood of human being does not ask for justice, it asks for vengeance. It is only the blood of Jesus Christ that asks for mercy. Ask for mercy. Speaks for mercy. And the Bible says, all the high priest died and all the blood that was shed, there was none that could appear in heaven so that heavenly things can also be cleansed. It was when Jesus died, the veil broke he went to heaven. He said to Mary, touch me not. I have not seen the Father. And when he got there, because he was the only one who could penetrate, and it was the only blood that did not carry any iniquity, the Bible says he was able to also cleanse heavenly things with his blood. <laughs> Making him now the altar of salvation. So if you bind, heaven will agree to that. Why? Because heaven recognizes the blood of Jesus. They don't recognize any other blood. Because he appeared with his blood. So you see the reason why we take the blood and why we hit the flesh. And finally, before we say one or two prayer points, it was the last supper. It was the last food. The last night, after that last meal, he was arrested. That was the last food they ate that ended the last testament. And when he rose up, it was the same food that he ate with the disciples. And the Bible says, I will not until when you come again in my father's kingdom, I will eat with you. So he ate it to end the ministry. He ate it when he resurrected. We will also together eat it with him when we get there. You see the power of communion. And anything that is strong enough to provoke your faith is also strong enough to deliver your miracle. If this blood and this flesh can steer your faith, Oh, I'm telling you. Then you can walk tall. Every other doctrines, any other teaching, or any other insight, they can pass away with time. But communion will last forever. You get what I'm trying to say? There are other human doctrines. There are other human teachings. That they are just meant to be like an existence once and for all. For communion, it cannot be outdated. You cannot overdo it. You cannot exaggerate it. You cannot overemphasize it. It cannot be only a doctrine for a church. The moment a church does not believe in the blood and in the flesh, it is a cult. It is a cult. If you belong to a group where they don't drink this blood and they don't eat this flesh, then you are a cult. 
That is why today, as we do it consistently, as we do it frequently, then you should be more than this. You should be more than this. You don't run away from what will save you. All you need to do is to go away from where you are not eating it. If you are so afraid that, Lord, I don't want to eat it so that I will not die, then drop what is affecting you. Drop what is coming to your mind. So, it's a way of examining yourself. Because I've seen people that they don't want to take Holy Communion. If you ask them why, he said, Molekuo, Molekuo, into your power, yeni wa feeling. Whatever is strong enough that is keeping you away from eating Holy Communion is good enough to take you to hell. That is what the Bible says. When we come, we examine ourselves. Do you have bitterness in your heart against someone? Don't eat it first until you settle it. Do you have unforgiveness in your heart? Don't eat it until you settle it. He said, for some, after eating and drinking, they fell sick and they died. It shows to you it carries power. Power to make alive and power to kill. So it is not ordinary me. It is not ordinary food. It is what you live to eat forever. There shouldn't be any reason why we are not working in victory. There should be, be any reason why we don't have courage. There should be, shouldn't be any reason why we lack power. There should not be any reason why we are not strengthened. There shouldn't be any reason why we don't have boldness. Except you do not do it with understanding. So if there is anything I'm expecting, in less than 24 hours, after taking this communion, then there should be a testimony. Yeah. You are not shouting amen to that. Let me run this off before we begin to pray. Maybe this testimony we can do your heart. It's a real and living testimony. There was a brother who proposed to a sister. But before proposing to that sister, the sister was on wheelchair. Through living, real testimony. And as that sister was on wheelchair, the brother went to propose that said, God said you are my wife. So you can imagine... The family was against him. Friends said, think twice. It is easier now than to carry a body. The sister also said, ha, it must have been God. Because nobody was, was coming. So for you to have come, to have said God, he said it must have been God. On the wedding day, she wore the white and she sat on the wheelchair. And the brother was wearing the suit. They've done the joining. What they wanted to do was to serve communion. They brought the communion like this. There are times you can be so close and so familiar with the fact that you miss the impact. You hate it too much. Sometimes overeating can cause some uh, discomfort. Come as they are settled down now, they say, Pastor Yinka, ah, I get get bread in the corner. I get 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 he did not give them his blood. Yes, sir. Even when he was there and he was making statement of fact. In the spiritual world, you don't need to understand the process. You only need to see the essence. Yes, so that is why all he will ask you is believe. Believe. That is all he will ask you. Believe. It can go. It should have gone. It is because you don't believe. And God has helped us so much because we are physically wired. Human beings are physically wired. 
it has been so difficult for us to spiritually penetrate into the spiritual world so that things, if we kneel down to pray and we can't see things, we find it difficult to believe because our nature answers to what we see, what we feel. If you can describe sickness, then you find it difficult to describe God. Tell the doctor, moment you say, when you only be eating you, only be a donu, a wakanyan pill. Because on wakan to it is wakai this way, wakai this way, wakai this way. So you can say it, and they have thermometer. I'm going to they put it like this. They say your temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. And they say all sorts of things. Ranging from COVID to Ebola. To they say, I don't know you. Uh -huh. Because you can see that. So it has not been very difficult for you to believe it because you feel it. So Jesus is also looking that if this generation, Jesus is also looking that if humanity, they are so much being controlled by what they see, let me help them. And how do I help you? If you can handle this and say this is the blood, and you can handle this and say this is the flesh, then your faith is assisted. Your faith is assisted. Your faith is encouraged. So, because the strength of faith is imagination. But the strength of faith is positive imagination. Because negative imagination will drown you and it will keep you away from the testimony of God. So as I handle it, I can see it. I can see it. So I tell him, the only thing I'm closing my eyes to now is his flesh. So I said, this is your flesh. This is the world. I believe I can see it. Carry it. I believe I want to drink it. I Do you believe it? You do like this. So if it can go through and you are misbehaving at the power of a gogoro, then this did not show to carry a particular power in the body. So when you put it in your mouth and you are grubbing it, and confidence in the care of the problem we have is there is no self-motivation in every message that you hear. What you say, 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 Baba, Baba, you're a lady. I'm 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 a Ah, you say, eh, you meet there? No. So, am I just going to be a little bit more than a little bit? As you are hitting it, you grab it. You feel it. Then you talk. I'm also feeling it. If I feel a dick and I feel this bread, it's a bad Then you drink it. Be a good one. 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 As you are drinking it and it's moving through your system, begin to see how that blood is going through the vein. So, COVID is dying, cancer is dying, ulcer is dying, lumbago is dying, barrenness is dying, disease is dying, sickness is dying, setback is dying, heel lock is dying, difficulty is dying, oppression is dying. Jesus said, Even the demons, they believe God exists. And what do they do? Tremble. So you wallow. So God is saying, don't wait until you think the devil is shaking. Just like you believe. They too, they believe. The difference is when they hear God, they shake. They shiver. So he said, resist the devil. So when he said that, he too went to go and meet the devil. He said, devil, when they resist you, so all you need to do today, hmm, please, don't manage the blood. Don't manage it. It's beyond that. Ah, the blood of Christ is an asset. It's not something you manage. You must come to a level 
whereby the way you place seed on challenges and God has helped you, the blood of Jesus does not cost much. Instead of say, ah, take the blood, take the flesh, as you drink it, as you eat it, then expect. Expect. You don't know until you take step. Act. Act. I don't know when you finish it. Okay, the way I take on here. No, 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 Drink the blood. One of them transfer me, love it, other. I transfer you. He said, by what? He said, by the blood. <laughs> by the blood. What is there there? What is there there? I've taken, I've, I've drawn the blood. You must, it is boldness that activates what he has given unto you. The moment the boldness is there, then everything is there. And boldness is not fake. If you don't have it, you don't have it. It is not fake. Because boldness comes from within and it comes from conviction. But it is not perfect. If you are hearing God's word like this, I mean, how do you feel now? Say, I feel bold, man. Hey, down. Yes, sir. Don't worry. Eat it, drink it. Don't only face trailer. Face spiritual things. <laughs> May God bless you.